now we're going to uh, kind of uh, carry on our discussion over uh, some of the basic applications of orthogonal projections. Um, we proved in our um, last discussion uh, theorem about the best approximation and uh, how we can use that notion of best approximation to do some of the very interesting thing. For example, one of the things that we did in our, in our last class is that imagine if you have, for example, um, uh, a function, say sin x, we talked about say sin x, sinusoidal function, um, and uh, if you, so, 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 so if you consider the sin x over, uh, what do you call, uh, an interval minus pi to pi, okay, and if I say that what would be um, the function that can approximate the sin x in the interval pi to pi. So you have many choices. For example, one of the choice is that you do the Taylor approximation, but we saw actually that the Taylor approximation gives a good approximation, but towards the tell, tells of the interval, towards the ends of the interval minus pi to pi, you know, um, the Taylor approximation of sin x deviates a bit from um, uh, from the from from the graph of the sin x actually. Okay, uh, and 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 keep in view that we were talking about the fifth order um, kind of approximation of um, sin x actually. And then we 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 kind of constructed a polynomial, a fifth degree polynomial, based on the notion of that that what is the polynomial okay in the space of the continuous function over the intervals minus pi to pi that best approximates uh, what do you call sin x we constructed that uh, you know polynomial uh, and then you know we kind of also saw that 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 polynomial that we found through the best approximation through the orthogonal projection actually uh, is is way better than um, than the Taylor approximation actually. So we will carry on our discussion on different applications of orthogonal projections. So we're going to cover today um, mainly, so we will, we will end up our discussions on orthogonal projection by uh, talking about finding an approximate solution to inconsistent system actually. So we know that inconsistent systems does not have a solution, but can we find uh, a closest solution to an inconsistent system? The answer is basically yes, you can do it, and the orthogonal projection is going to kind of help you out. So, let me recall two basic results, uh, and then we will also start our discussion over um, uh, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors actually. So, in our, today's discussion, I'm going to quickly cover the very basics of um, the eigenvalue and eigenvectors. So you might assume that you, you know it uh, from uh, your first linear algebra course. So I'm going to quickly review the basic theory of it. Um, and I'll try to give you, you know, uh, to present some of the result in a, in a consistent and coherent way. OK, so, so let's recall uh, what we did in our last class. We did in our last class that um, that if, for example, you have a subspace U, so if this is a subspace, say, U, okay, and this is the orthogonal part of the subspace U, so let's call this that this is U part, okay, and, uh, you know, so these both are the subspaces of an inner product space mu, and say, you know, this is vector 0. Now, if in this space, in this generic space, if I consider, for example, a vector v, so if v is this an abstract vector, what do you call in, uh, in, 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 the, in a product space v, then uh, if you want to approximate this vector in subspace, so in subspace there are you know, there can be a lot of vectors which are kind of uh, closest in the sense of the distances, okay, to the vector v, but what would be the best vector, what would be the vector that best approximates 
what do you call the vector, uh, what do you call V actually. So the best approximation of vector V in a subspace U is basically the orthogonal projection of this vector onto the subspace U actually. So if this is V, then this is really the shadow of the V into the space, what do you call U actually. And let's call this shadow, and this shadow is really what you call the orthogonal projection of V. Okay, so this vector V is really the orthogonal projection of the vector V onto the subspace U actually. Okay, so if you consider, for example, any other vector, okay, and consider the distance between the vector V and the, uh, uh, the distance between the vector V and the orthogonal projection and consider the distance between what do you call the vector V and any other vector so let's call this vector what do you call U then it turns out that in the inner product of the norm of the space V the distance between the vector V and its orthogonal projection okay, onto the subspace U this distance is less than or equal to the distance of V from the any other vector, what do you call U actually. So in other words, if you want to see the difference between a vector V and you know the orthogonal projection in the sense of the size actually, that how much, what is the size of the difference between these two vectors, then this size is less than or equal to the distance between vector V and all other vectors in what do you call uh, what do you call in the space U actually. So therefore we say that the projection of the vector V onto the space U is the best approximation of the V in the space U actually. So we proved uh, this theorem actually and uh, let me recall another interesting result which was what do what you call the theorem about the normal equations which actually says okay so 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 we know that we can compute the orthogonal projections say of a vector v onto a space u by computing so if u is a finite dimension of the space obviously this u is all these u and u but they are finite dimension v and v could be finite or infinite dimensional so if you want to consider that construct what do you call the projection of the vector v onto a finite dimensional space u say u has bases u1, u2 and say up to un then the, uh, and, and this basis is orthonormal basis okay then the orthogonal projection of v onto the subspace u with this orthonormal basis can be computed through this formula through this formula. So this is really the orthogonal projection of the V onto the space that is spanned by these vectors UIs which are which forms an orthonormal basis of the U vector. So we know this. The question is if what if the question is what if this u1, u2, un is not an orthonormal basis of u, but we just know that this u is spanned by what do you call these vectors u1 up to un. Okay? And u1 up to un are not even necessarily linearly independent actually. Okay? So you have some bunch of vectors from v and they span, say, for example, uh, space u actually. And now you want to compute the orthogonal projection of an abstract vector from the space V onto such a space U. The question is how you can compute it. We know how to do it when you know these are orthonormal and you know orthonormal bases of U, but if they just span U, then the um, this projection can be computed basically in the following manner. And the manner is that this projection of V onto the space U is an element of U. So if this is an element of U, you can write this as the linear combination of these vectors, I equal to 1 to N, Ci and Ui. 
where these ci are basically um, the constants which are the solution of a matrix say ac equal to what do you call b okay so if you want to for example find ci such that you have an explicit formula for the orthogonal projection of v onto the space u then you need to solve the following system where this these matrix a and uh, uh, if the matrix a is this matrix okay which goes like um, let's say if i write it a bit more uh, explicitly okay a bit more by the way this system of equations is really called the normal uh, system of equations so the ci is, is the solution of the normal equation where a is uh, is is a matrix comprising of these inner products, which is which are um, uh, u one one u one and say u two u one and up to u n u one. So this is the first row of the matrix A, and the second row of matrix A is u two u one and u two up to u n u okay and so on and so forth the last row is going to be u n u1 up to u n and u n actually okay so this is this is the matrix a where the c is the vector uh, c1 c2 c n transpose so this is really the vector c and the vector b is really the orthogonal, uh, the inner product of the vector that you want to project onto uh, the, 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 the inner product of the vector that you want to project with the you know basis vector u1 into un. So v1, u1, no, vu1 and vu2 and so on and so forth and vun actually. Okay? So if if you want, you have a subspace, okay, then um, then uh, that is generated by some vectors which are not necessarily linearly independent. They are just some bunch of vectors. They're not necessarily from bases of U. They just span U, and you want to project a vector v onto such a space. Then you need to compute the coefficients actually. In other words, U v is going to be the linear combination of U i's, but you need to find these C i's. Where the CI is a solution to this, what do you call system, where the A, C, and B are these matrices. So compute these matrices and solve the system, you're going to get what do you call an explicit orthogonal projection of um, uh, V onto uh, what do you call this space U. So we did, we did these two basic results, and then we, using these two results, we you know solved some of the interesting problems including finding uh, uh, an approximation okay approximation for sin x by solving the sin, uh, 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 the normal equations we found a, an approximation for sin x that is better than the taylor approximation Okay. Taylor approximation. In other words, we tried to find the orthogonal projection of sin x onto a space u, which is the span of this these fifth degree polynomials, 1, 2, up to say, x power 5 actually. So we found this. So that was a very interesting kind of example. So this is a quick review of the things that we did in our last class. So now I would like to move towards another very interesting kind of application of uh, these two theorems again actually and that would be really the last thing that I'm going to discuss actually. This method that we're going to discuss or the, the topic that we're going to discuss is really one of the very frequently used methods in, in statistics actually and it's called the method of least square actually. That uh, are fitting a regression line actually that okay if you have for example 
a good amount of data. Okay, so if you have, you know, uh, so you have this two-dimensional plane where x and y are two quantities which are related with each other, and then you have what you call some bunch of points. Okay, so you have some bunch of points. Okay, so this is some bunch of points data. The question is, what is the uh, the what is the straight line that fits or the best approximates all these points actually? Okay, so this method or finding such a linear relationship bet, uh, between the data is called the method of least squares actually. So it's a very interesting and a very frequently used method in. In, in, in statistics and social sciences actually where you, you where you all the time try to fit such lines and you know make different kind of conclusions actually but we're gonna see that what is justification for this method you will see that even behind this method the orthogonal projection the machinery of the orthogonal projections is working actually so it's it's such a beautiful kind of um, uh, kind of a uh, kind of a kind of a notion actually okay you know you know I mean if, if, if when you will for example do some more sophisticated courses on um, say uh, probability theory say stochastic calculus and you will do some finance you will see that even um, the orthogonal projections actually they they are at the really at the herd and the center of what you call the mathematical finance where all kind of uh, the financial derivatives in the complete market can be priced through what you call the conditional expectation actually and the conditional expectation is basically orthogonal projection actually okay of some kind onto the space of the square integrable function i know it's a lot of waving of hand but orthogonal projections are one of the topics that that has a lot of influence on um, what do you call uh, science you know in physics and finance and in, in, in social sciences actually so this is something that we should learn very uh, kind of carefully so let's just start with let's just start with um, say a system so imagine I have a system so let me let me let me put for example the topic so it's a so so the thing that we are moving towards is that we are we want to find a least square solution okay we want to find a least square solution to an inconsistent system actually to an inconsistent system okay so this is this is pretty strange that you know you you have learned that okay an inconsistent system you know does not have a solution so what kind of solution does the inconsistent system? This is, you know, this is the solution actually of an inconsistent system that kind of best approximates, which is kind of the closest to be the solution of that inconsistent system actually. So here is, here is, say a system. So imagine you have a system, say x equal to y, and say, um, okay. So, so what we would like to do that. Imagine you have this system A x equal to y, okay, and this system is say inconsistent actually, where A is an m by n matrix, okay, so it's an n by n matrix, and x and y are from uh, say x is from what do you call fn. In other words, you have this inconsistent system where the x is from um, fn. So, so the y is going to be from the mn actually. So, and let's assume that this system is inconsistent. Is inconsistent. So, what is our goal? Our goal is to prove an interesting theorem that basically tells that you can always find. So, if you have a system which is inconsistent, for such a system, you can always find we want to find so we want to find an x in fn such that this uh, 
uh, since the system is inconsistent, I know that then the ax minus ax, you know, any x would not satisfy, would not give you y actually. And what does it mean that ax minus y would not be equal to zero for any x in fn? Okay. So if ax minus y is a quantity that is not equal to zero, the question is, can I find a y for which this vector I know that it's not zero, but can I get something, some x, for which this difference is close to zero? So if I can find such an x which is like the closest for which this difference ax minus y is closest to the zero, I'm going to say that that x is really uh, the least square solution of uh, inconsistent system. And why it is least square, we're going to see it. Okay, so such that we want to find an x in Fn such that for which this ax minus y in 2 norm, okay, so 2 norm, so 2 norm is really the Euclidean norm, is smallest actually, is smallest. So this is what really is our objective actually, that okay, we want to fit an x, we want to find an x for which this norm is smallest actually and you can you can you can say that if you have an x for for which this ax minus y is smallest you're gonna say so we will say that then this x is best approximate solution is is best approximate solution to ax equal to y. Okay? ax equal to y. So it's the best approximate solution to ax equal to y. So here is the theorem. Here is the theorem and the theorem is going to be proved on the basis of the result that we, you know, that I just mentioned previously. So here is the theorem. So the theorem says that imagine you have a matrix A whose order is n by m and the entries are from the field F where the f can be a set of real numbers or a set of complex numbers okay then a uh, uh, set of complex numbers and y is an element from say fm okay then if you have an x naught okay that satisfies then there is an x, so, so if we have an x naught from say fn that satisfies this, okay, or then we can find an x naught from fn such that 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 this distance ax naught minus y in two norm is basically the minimum, okay, it's the smallest of the distances are the smallest of the difference between ax and y from all x in fn actually okay from all x in fn so in other words you can find such an x naught from fn for which the distance or the difference between ax naught and y in 2 norm is smallest among the all x's you know, among the all distances between, uh, among the all x's for which, uh, you know, among the all distances between ax and y, okay, so this distance is minimum, obviously in 2 norm. Now, this will happen if and only if, now this x naught is going to be the minimum from the all x, okay, such that this distance is smallest, okay, if and only if, this x naught solves a system that goes like a star a x naught equal to what do you call it a star y okay so if you want to find okay if you want to find a best approximate solution to an inconsistent system then solve this system so any solution of this system, okay, where A star means the conjugate transpose is going to be the solution 
okay, is going to be the x that best approximates the y, okay, that best approximates the y in 2 naught actually. Or the distance between, or the difference between ax naught and y is minimum actually. Okay, it's not zero, but it's close to zero. Okay, so this is this is an interesting problem that why <coughs> such a such a why this minimum approximation is basically the solution of this system a a star x not equal to a star y not up to okay by the way this is two not if I call this a star. One thing that is about a star is that the system a star is always consistent actually. Okay? It's always consistent. So what do you mean by that? In other words, you always have a solution for such a system. And if you have a solution for such a system, that means you always have an x naught for which this difference is minimum. Okay, this norm is minimum. R, which is a closest solution, or the best approximate solution of the system A x equal to y. Okay, so there is always a solution to this system, and hence you can always find a best approximate solution to an inconsistent system. Okay, and you can say that if Moreover, 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 if the rank of the matrix A is n actually, rank of the matrix A is n. Okay, so in other words, it's a matrix in which you have n independent rows, okay, or columns. Uh, then this system has a unique solution. This is interesting. Then the star has a unique solution. Then the star has a unique solution. Otherwise, there can be several x naught for which the distance is minimum. Okay, but that minimum distance is going to be common for all x naught actually. Okay? So so this is really the key result. If you want to make a picture of it, the picture would go like that. Uh, the pictorial representation of this will go like that. So if, if for example, I have this matrix A and say this represents the column space of A. So what do you mean by the column space of A? So take the columns of the matrix A, okay? So the column space of a, I'm going to prove this result quickly, is really the span of span of columns of A actually. Okay, so span of the columns of A. So this is what is the meaning of the column space. So, so if you take the column space of A, then the orthogonal part, so we know this very well from our previous discussion, the orthogonal part of the column space of A is really the null space of A actually. Okay? The orthogonal part of the column space of A is null space of A. This is the null of A. Okay? And not for null of A star actually. Not A but A star. Okay? Now if I have, for example, a vector y, okay, and this is the column space, and then what you can do, then you, what you can do is that your required x naught, okay, your required x naught is basically the best approximation of y onto the column space of A actually. Okay? So, 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 so your required vector that best approximates y 
is the orthogonal projection of y onto the column space of column space of a. So it's an orthogonal projection of y onto the column space of a and say call this vector x naught actually. So this vector is x naught since so what kind of elements do you have in the column space of a? Okay, so if you want to write for example